Good morning. Uh, sorry that I'm not seeing any of you in person today, but uh, if you have been outside at all and looked down at uh, down at Main Street, it's not exactly an easy place to get around, and even the parking lot is still uh, snowed in. It's just not a great day to be out at all. So I'm glad you're at home, but I'm also glad that you are uh, that you're joining in worship today, even if in uh, kind of a very different setting than we're used to. I want to kind of run through just a few things as we go, as we get started today. One are announcements for what's coming up this week, and uh, you'll see them up on the screen as we go. Uh, Monday, we have uh, Mavix at 10, so if you want to come and join us and have some breakfast with us, uh, have a cup of coffee, uh, you are welcome to. Uh, Monday evening, our music small group will meet at 5 p.m. Tuesday, uh, we'll be back at Mavix for Bible study at 10 o'clock. While we'll meet down at the nutrition site at 1230. Uh, and so for any women that want to come and join in a time of Bible study and fellowship with, uh, with one another. And then our prayer group will meet uh, up here, back, uh, back in the uh, back by my office, uh, in one of the Sunday school classrooms back there at 530 on Tuesday night. Wednesday night, choir will be uh, meeting at 530. Uh, Thursday... We'll have a serve team meeting probably downstairs in one of the Sunday school classrooms at, uh, at 1.30. And so, you, uh, so if you're on serve team, please uh, plan to attend that. And then uh, Thursday night at 6 o'clock, uh, Roger's small group, Building Faith, uh, will be, we'll be meeting at his house down at his shop at, uh, at 6 o'clock. And you've seen probably some of the pictures of the things that they're doing. They are doing some wonderful, wonderful work. I'm looking forward to seeing what else comes out of, uh, out of their small group. Uh, there are a couple of other announcements of things that kind of are taking place. The baptism that we were going to have today will be rescheduled. We'll let you know a time as we get uh, as we get closer to that. Also, youth and youth parents, watch for an announcement about uh, our next meeting time uh, later later this month. Uh, and then a church council will meet on January 23rd. And so if you are a new officer to that or would just kind of like to come and see how things are going, um, that will be at... Uh, I lost my time for that. At 6.30 down in the Fellowship Hall, and uh, you're welcome to come and join us for that meeting. Uh, something else that is coming up. Let me get to it. There we go. Uh, you can't see it here because you'll see the graphics in front of you, but I'm staring at the back screen of the uh, sanctuary. Um, coming up on January 20th will be our first mission breakfast of 2019, and so you are invited to come and to share in that. We'll have more announcements coming out about that later uh, in the week. We'll need some folks to sign up for, for some things to help and bring, or, uh, but that'll be at 9 o'clock during our Sunday school time, and during that time we'll have an opportunity to learn about other mission uh, activities and opportunities that we'll have to serve uh, this next year. And then coming up, something that's important to me, you'll see it in your bulletins next week. Uh, for some reason, they even like to put my face on an insert for this. I don't know why. It probably broke the camera or the printer or something. But on February 9th is our third annual Rural Church Conference. And uh, we'll, be, uh, we'll, be, so we'll be joining at Emerson Fields down south of, down south of Macon for a day of learning uh, together with folks from uh, with many folks from around our from around our district and our conference that are in similar places to us in rural and small town churches, uh, and so uh, registration is open for that. The cost is twenty dollars, um, and we'll be covering three big topics for the day. For the day, one is on rural poverty. The other is on youth ministry, and the third that I'll be leading is on technology uh, in churches and worships and uh, providing uh, good resources that don't break your bank or probably even are free, uh, or even just what to look for and what to know uh, to do uh, in church uh, and using technology. So if you have more questions about that, do feel free to contact me and I'll be, or if you just want some help in registering, I'll be glad to do that. Uh, but do come talk to me uh, more about it. Um, I think that is all of the announcements that I have. Uh, this morning I do want to lift up a few joys. You'll see them up on the screen, the folks that are having having birthdays this week. And so if you get a chance, give them, uh, give them a shout out and a happy birthday. Do have a few folks to add to our prayer list that I know of. 
do keep Glenn Lindblom in your prayers. He is uh, down in the hospital uh, at Boone in, in Columbia, uh, recovering from pneumonia. Uh, so do keep him in your prayers as he is regaining uh, his strength and healing and getting well. But he is he is getting there. And they uh, they weathered out the storm. Uh, he and uh, Faye did down in the hospital. So they had nice, comfortable surroundings and just got to watch the uh, snow fall. Uh, do keep Kyle and Carol Lake in your prayers. Kyle had uh, knee replacement surgery, and Carol is getting ready to go in for uh, in for a procedure. So do keep them in your prayers. Um, do keep Bill Arthur in your prayers also. He is getting ready to go in for bypass surgery uh, this next week, and so we'll need uh, we'll need our prayers for that. And also the folks that are uh, still recovering from the storm and the snow and the cleanup and all of those things that take place. Uh, so do keep them in your prayers also. I want to take just a moment and offer up uh, just a time of prayer. I know it's going to feel kind of odd as you're watching a video and uh, in this time of prayer, but uh, I do invite you to just take a moment. Uh, first with just a silent prayer that you'll say, then I'll say a few words, and then I'll put up on the screen and you can join with me in the Lord's Prayer. Let us pray. Most gracious God, we give you thanks for this day and for this time together. Even as odd as it feels, disjointed as it might be between being at home instead of in church with the snow down all around us and the big piles of it everywhere, Lord, we give you thanks that we are still able to join in worship together, even if we are uh, scattered out uh, in our homes and in other places in this day. We ask that you watch over us as we work on, uh, on shoveling and uh, getting rid of the snow, but also enjoying uh, and enjoying your beauty that comes, that comes with it. We ask, Lord, that you be with those folks we know that are hurting uh, and that are suffering, especially those folks we know are trying to heal and to get well or are going through or have been through procedures recently that, uh, uh, that are putting them in a place where they are in need of your healing touch. Lord, we ask that you be with those folks, and especially that you're with those folks that are, that, uh, are facing the struggles and the challenges of, of the snowstorm that has come through, and especially the folks that are working on cleaning our roads and streets and parking lots, and the ones that are out in, in this weather, making it so that we can get out and we can be and do the things that we need to do. Lord, we lift all of this up to you in this day, and we lift it up in the name of your Son, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. As we commit it to your care, we do so through the words of the prayer that Christ taught us. As we say together, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, and thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. So I, um, uh, I, this is going to sound odd, but I wrote a different sermon for this today because I'm like, I'm, you know, I want to, the other one that I'd written, I want to make sure I can do on Sunday morning. But also I thought I want to do something just a little bit more fun or different this morning for, uh, for our message. So I invite you, you can turn in your own Bible if you have it there handy or watch here on the screen. We'll be in Isaiah chapter 1 verses 10 to 20 this morning. So hear these words. Hear the Lord's word, you leaders of Sodom. Listen uh, to our God's teaching, people of Gomorrah. What should I think about all your sacrifices, says the Lord? I'm fed up, entire, with, I'm fed up with entirely burned offerings of rams and the fat of well-fed beasts. I don't want the blood of bulls, lambs, and goats. When you come to appear before me, who asked this from you, this trampling of my temple's courts? Stop bringing worthless offerings. Your incense repulses me. New moon, Sabbath, and the calling of an assembly. I can't stand wickedness with celebration. I hate your new moons and your festivals. They become a burden that I'm tired of bearing. When you extend your hands, I'll hide my eyes from you. Even when you pray for a long time, I won't listen. Your hands are stained with blood. Wash. Be clean. Remove your ugly deeds from my sight. Put an end to such evil. Learn to do good. Seek justice. Help the oppressed. Defend the orphan. Plead for the wid widow. Come now and let's settle this, says the Lord. 
Though your sins are like scarlet, they will be white as snow. If they are red as crimson, they will become like wool. If you agree and obey, you will eat the best food of the land. But if you refuse and rebel, you will be devoured by the sword. The Lord has said this. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. I hope that as you are watching this message today, that um, you are at home in a nice and a warm place without worrying too much about what you have to get out and do today. Um, because I know it's been a while since we've had this kind of snow, this big, deep piling snow that comes uh, all at once uh, and uh, kind of shuts everything down around us. And so today is a great day for playing in it or for staying inside and playing games, reading a book, watching a movie, or if you're like Emily and I, probably doing what we should have done a week or two ago, which is taking down all of the Christmas decorations at some point, they do actually have to go down. I know there's only like 355 some odd days of uh, Chris, uh, until Christmas gets here, but that's a long enough time. They can go away for a while. Uh, um, but we did our playing yesterday a little bit. Yesterday we went out and we, uh, we finished shoveling the driveway, in, at least in the morning, before all the rest of that snow that came in the afternoon piled kind of back up on top of it. Uh, but it was nice to at least get the first nine and a half inches of snow off of the driveway. And then we took a walk around our block a little bit just to, just to enjoy the snow and the weather and to see what everything looked like. Now you all have heard me say this in the past that uh, that I like snow and I like winter. Consequently, uh, as we were out walking after we'd finished shoveling, I only had on, uh, you know, in terms of like extra layers, I had a couple of pairs of socks on, I had a pullover on, a thin pair of gloves, and, and I was good. I was nice and I was warm and I was okay. Uh, Emily is not such a fan of the cold, so she only had like 50 or 60 layers of extra clothing on to keep her warm as we were uh, walking there around the neighborhood. Um, but there's something that's different and that's, and that's neat and that's exciting about um, this. And when things are covered in snow and just kind of the different look that they have, uh, that they have about them. Uh, that, that look is, uh, it's one of the things I enjoyed about when I was a kid. Uh, one of my favorite times of year to go camping was, uh, was when it was snowing out, when it had snowed outside. And, and you know, there was, there's of course that challenge of, you know, when you get up in the morning and you know there's like three, four, five, six, six inches of snow around your tent and you're nice and warm in your sleeping bag and you have to get out and you've got to get, you know, put your layers on so you can stay warm and you get out and you start the fire so you can maybe have some breakfast or at least some additional warmth and, you know, all of that takes some extra work to get going. But then especially if you're, you're in the woods where we had a tendency to camp, you would look out and you could see uh, just what it was that was out there. And the beauty of what a, what a forest looks like when, uh, when it is covered in snow. You can look around and you can see where the snow has drifted and where it covers so much of the landscape that is around. And there is something about that snow that seems to even things out where you can look before and you can see there are piles of leaves or dead branches or rocks or other things that are just kind of uh, seemingly haphazardly strewn around uh, the area you're camped in when that snow comes down it has this tendency to kind of even things out and to smooth the edges out and it just has this different wonderful look about it and then the light reflects off of it and shines in so many different ways and different colors and it just has this wonderful look. Now hold on to that thought of what a winter snow looks like for a moment. And uh, I'm gonna switch gears to something completely different. Did you know that in scripture there is absolutely zero mention of yellow snow? I looked it up. There is snow that gets talked about in scripture, but no yellow snow. Not even, uh, if we take a step back from that, there's not even mention of dirty snow in there anywhere. And when you start to think about it, it seems kind of odd because, you know, the Middle East and Israel are not exactly known for their vast amounts of snowfall that they get. They're not the place that you want to go on a, on a, on a, on a holiday ski trip. Um, that's the place where snowbirds want to go to get away from all of the cold and the snow and everything. Um, 
But there are a number of places all throughout Scripture that talk about snow. But they never mention the dirty snow. There's never a mention of that snow that has piled up on the end of your driveway. You know, that's been plowed two or three or four times and just kind of piled up and it's dirty and gray and, and nasty. It's not the, it never mentions any kind of that snow that gets, that gets caked into the wheel wells of your car. And there's certainly none of that snow where you look out and you can tell just where the dog has gone out and done his business. That is not at all its purpose in Scripture. The snow that we're talking about in Scripture is the pure, clean snow. That is the freshly fallen snow or completely, or the snow that is completely undisturbed by others. This is the snow in its pure form. And it is used as, as a description of who we could be. Go for a minute back to our scripture reading this morning and uh, take a look at Isaiah chapter 1, uh, verse, uh, verse 18. You'll, if you're seeing me clicking, wondering what I'm doing, I'm staring at the back screen in the sanctuary and where everything is up that you're seeing on the screen in front of you. Uh, verse 18, in verse 18, Isaiah says this, Come now and let's settle this, says the Lord. Though your sins are like scarlet, they will be white as snow. If they are red as crimson, they will become like wool. Snow throughout scripture is used for purity and to describe being cleansed and being made clean of all that is wrong. It's not the dirty stuff, but the pure, clean snow that has fallen to the ground. In this passage out of Isaiah, the prophet is describing what Israel has done wrong or done badly. Uh, he's describing how far they have fallen. Even in verse 11, the prophet is describing just how rote the offerings and sacrifices that Israel offers to God have become. Uh, he tells them that God is tired of these kinds of offerings and sacrifices because they have missed the point of them. They are just now doing them because they think that they have to do them. There is no meaning, there is no purpose, there is no focus or direction behind them. And God, is, Isaiah is telling them that God is tired of this kind of offering because, because, because of that, they are missing so many other things that God thinks are so very, very important. They are now doing things because they think they're supposed to do them, but God wants them to be different. He wants them to be the people that he wanted them to be, that he made them to be, not what they've become. And so what is it that he tells them to do? He tells them this. He says, uh, learn to do good, seek justice, help the oppressed, defend the orphan, plead for the widow. This is in uh, verse 17. Isaiah is telling them that just doing the offerings and sacrifices because you think you have to do them is basically like building a snowman out of yellow snow. In God's eyes, that is gross and disgusting. But here's the thing. This is what I like about every, just about every single mention that we have of snow in Scripture is always done in relation to this, just as we saw in verse 18. And there is always this moment of hope that is offered. The snow is offered as the description of what we can be, and not where we are. Because there is hope that God gives that says we can be different. We don't have to stay where we are. We can be made as pure and as clean uh, and as hopeful as that freshly fallen snow. God knows that sometimes we lose our way. And that's why he works to give us a path out of it. For the folks, when Isaiah was writing, that path comes through the prophet Isaiah as he is the one uh, listening for God's voice and helping them to find that right way out if they will just listen so that their sins that are like scarlet will become as white as snow. They will be clean and pure just as that fallen snow is. For us, that path works in a little bit different direction. And the story of Jesus' transfiguration, when the disciples see Jesus transfigured in front, of, in front of them, and he is joined by Moses and Elijah, the garments that Jesus is wearing are described as being as white as uh, snow. That pure kind that only comes from some, when something is completely and totally clean, without blemish or spot or even bit of yellow snow. 
That's where our path goes through. It goes through the person of Jesus Christ. This is the challenge that we face so many times. It's easy for us to become complacent and do things because we think we have to do them. And quite frankly, there are still going to be a lot of things that we do in our life that we do because we have to do them. We may not know the purpose behind them. We may not like it, but we have to do it. But not everything has to be that way. It doesn't always have to happen in that way. There are many places in our lives where that can be changed. My challenge to us is this. Is that to each of us, we look at who we are and we look at what we do. We look for those spots of yellow snow that we have in our life. The places where we have lost the meaning for what we are doing. They could have something to do with family, with friends, with work, with the activities that we like to do or think that we like to do. Uh, but maybe it's time to shift some things and change some things up. Uh, they could even have to do with our faith. And in fact, there's probably a lot of them that have to do with our faith. When you discover them, that is the time then to go to God in prayer. To lift those things up to God and say, God, here they are. Uh, I need to do something different. They have lost their meaning. They have lost their purpose. Help me to see something new and something different, a new way of doing things. God always gives us hope that we don't have to stay in the yellow snow. It can be made pure and fresh and clean again. But we do that the same way that the Israelites did that with Isaiah. We stop and we listen to God to see the direction that he is putting in front of us. And then we go forward on the path that he has placed ahead of us. So do this for me this week. Go out today. Enjoy the snow. Look for the hope that God gives us in the beauty of what has fallen and has come down to earth. And most importantly, look for the ways that God sends us out to share this good news and this hope with others that are searching for that same meaning in their lives. Go and do this in Jesus' name, and then we'll see you back here next Sunday. Amen.